Good day, everyone. I am Abhishek. I'm the founder of Clamp, and we enable anyone with low crypto knowledge to invest in digital asset indexes and build a diversified portfolio. Between January and June, I spent my time talking to people, trying to understand what are the problems with crypto, especially in India, because our adoption has been abysmally low back home in India. I realized that crypto investing for a beginner was absolutely broken. Active investment in crypto was time consuming. It had trial and error. As a result, 90% of those interested never actually invested in crypto. And this was becoming a problem. There is a set user behavior in India, which prefers passive investment because it is easy, saves time and money for the investors. Talking about equity markets alone, 140 million Indians invest actively each month, but 420 million Indians do it passively through a ETF or another product. In India, you have a lot of crypto exchanges solving for the active investment market, but who is solving for passive investment in crypto to ensure that people who can't actually understand crypto, but they want to start into crypto, who is building for them? That's where Clam comes into the picture. Only 2% Indians have invested in crypto so far, and we believe we are going to change that. Together with other emerging markets, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to onboard the next billion users to crypto and DeFi. We build Clamp. By Clamp, we offer digital asset indexes, which give a user the option to start with as low as $10. So we enable fractional ownership in crypto as well. We are trying to bring down every barrier that exists for someone who is just starting out in crypto. Users can pick a preset or do it yourself and build a diversified portfolio. Our aim was to ensure that our users can build a diversified portfolio. Our users hold the token. We do not hold it for them. We are absolutely a self custody platform. We do not charge a management or exit fees to our users with a seamless on and off ramp experience that we shall provide going into the future. It will enable users to set up recurring purchases that shall be deducted directly from the bank account. And the best part about all of this, you can get started in less than 30 seconds. We have, we are not just talking about building something that can actually get you started in less than 30 seconds. We've already built it out. Just feel free to, you know, chat to me and I will give the entire demo. You have a lot of crypto exchanges that are trying to solve this problem with recurring purchases. So what happens is on the front end, they tell the user they are setting up recurring purchases while they hold custody of the tokens. Poster child of every custodial platform and centralized exchange FTX has shown why self custody is important in crypto going forward. And somewhere we have deviated away from the core fundamentals and ethos of decentralization and cryptocurrencies. At Clamp, we enable digital asset indexes, but we do it in a little different way from what it is done currently by a lot of index fund tokens. Right now, index fund tokens create a new index token, a new ERC-20. They wrap it up, they mint this, and then they give it to the user. The problem with this approach is it costs high gas fees on the business side, as well as along the pro, uh, option of uh, the problem of providing enough liquidity in the market. While on the legal front, this opens up a new challenge where your entire new ERC-20, the index token could be classified as a security. So at Clamp, we make things absolutely simple. If a user invests in a, cust in a digital asset index, the user actually owns the composite tokens directly. So this solves both the problem of bringing down gas fees to ensure that the transaction goes through because it's a multi-batch transaction while also ensuring that there are no regulatory frameworks where we fall under. We have some, we have a lot of traction. Paul Graham says that great YC startups grow between five to 7% a week. The best ones grow at 10%. So far, the focus we had on building a community while we were building the product on the back end was that we were very focused. On an average, we are growing 18% per week on LinkedIn. We have more than hundred users on the early access list. We have 3000 plus LinkedIn followers and we receive 2,500 plus applicants for an internship alone. Just to give you an example, I made this pitch deck yesterday night when we were at 3000 followers. Right now we've already crossed 3,500. That's the sort of traction and growth we are seeing at Clamp. On the team, it's me, Abhishek Yadav. I'm the founder and CEO of Clam. Back then, in the early days, 
I was a Q fellow at Concourse Q. For those who might not know, Concourse Q was the Concourse Open Community, which was doing due diligence on ICO projects. It later became DAPT, and from DAPT, it became the DeFi Pulse Index. That's where my knowledge about digital asset indexes comes from. So Clamp is not just four four months of my hard work; it's four years of my life and hard work. We have a very simple roadmap, a very ambitious target. So thank you. That's it from my end for today. Uh, please reach out to me, and I hope you will join us in our mission to bring the next billion users to crypto and DeFi. Thanks so much for that, Abhishek. I will bring on the judges for the Q and A segment. Hey, Abhishek, I would I would have a question, Pascal. Here, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Pascal. Awesome. So, in one of your graphs, you were mentioned you were basically comparing yourself to with FTX with some competitors, and you were putting yourself into this bracket of non-custodial. So, I assume you mean self-custody, right? Uh, so, yes. my question would be: if you bring no, users, that, if you bring users into self-custody that have not have no experience on how that actually works and what it is, like how do you actually educate them on maintaining their their wallet and stuff like this? Because if I'm like not really well rounded in that field. I have my seed phrase. I maybe take a screenshot of it or whatever, right? But if someone steals it or gets access to it, the, the funds are gone, right? So how do you manage that? Yes. So uh, we've had a lot of uh, work that has been done in the open source community and by the Ethereum core developers as well with account abstraction and especially with you know you can have smart contracts that actually function as a wallet. We will be also taking. Uh, we will, you know, we will build a product on top of the open source work that has been done, and it is our aim that you know we want to make it as simple as possible. We want to have a seedless self custody. So if you saw in my roadmap, we have it especially around August that we want to build a seedless self custody for users who can actually who even find onboarding or making a wallet difficult. We will solve it for them as well. Right now we can do it with Web3 Auth and other such providers, but going forward we want to ensure that we give the simplest. And the most straightforward solution possible. Hi, Axel here. Um, I have one question for any kind of downside protection for the user. So you say, as well um, as Pascal asked, the people are not very into the whole thing. So they could basically uh, decide uh, make very wrong decisions. Do you have any kind of protection for them? First question. And what about? smart contract risk on all of those do you um, plan to have insurances as well okay uh two questions i'll answer both of them so the first one are we you know giving investment advice to the users we are not giving investment advice because we don't want to get into that sandbox of investment advice the whole point of a digital asset index is to ensure that there is diversification in a portfolio it's much better than having all your tokens and portfolio concentrated in one place versus having it diversified. So that's one part. The second part about the smart contract risk. So as I mentioned, you know, uh, we don't create a new index token or we don't actually have it. We don't have a bridge or we don't have a smart contract, which is actually holding the tokens. What we do is we directly give the user the composite token and it sits on their wallet. So there are actually no risk wherein, you know, the smart contract is holding anything because this is something I have learned in my career in crypto and decentralization that smart contracts ideally should not be holding a lot of user funds or they should not be holding. They should sit directly with the user. So that's the approach we've taken. Abhishek, if I can ask a follow-up on that, can you just um, go into a bit more detail on how the composite token or the composite basically is held by the user? So you tap the cheapness of it. So you are presumably on a layer two. But then how do I, if I have, I don't know, a, a basket of 30% Bitcoin, 30% Polygon and Ethereum, how do you give that all to me? Because you said batch transactions, which means that I have to wait on the bus with others until my transaction gets executed, I presume, in order to be, to be cheap. But then how can I exit? Because then I have to wait again with every, everyone else. So I presume there's a time component to this, right? Uh, great, David. So what we did in the uh, initial phase was that we went for tokens which had liquidity in the market for the initial phase so that when we multi-batch transactions, it does not create a problem where the user has to wait a lot of time for the transaction to be completed. I'll be more than happy to show you the demo. We've actually built it out. Uh, it takes 22 seconds to be absolutely precise to complete one entire purchase of a digital asset index. More than happy to show you the entire demo after this. 
Cool. Thank you.